So I have just a few slides on, on who we are and then a couple of slides on uh, the challenges as an early stage shareholder and then another couple more slides on challenges as an early stage investor. So sort of two different perspectives um, to, to the early stage venture capital scene. So who are we? Uh, we're a division of the Business Development Bank of Canada. We've been doing venture capital for quite some time. I, I believe they started well before I joined uh, back in 1975. And I heard recently one of their first investments was a ski hill called Blackcomb. Uh, we've come a long way since then, but uh, <laughs> and now we just focus uh, mainly on early stage uh, investing and and only on technology uh, related companies. So we're looking for companies that have a proprietary position, high growth potential. You know, you're solving a global problem, and 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 companies that have the start of a management team or they're located in areas that we can hopefully build a management team around. Uh, we. Kind of practice two sort of models. One, we go direct, which is the, the part I'm involved with. I, I do life science investing. Uh, but under, under the direct side, we, we invest in all the main technology platforms, ITC, telecom, life sciences, and then a hodgepodge of sort of clean tech and advanced materials. And then we also do indirect. We invent, uh, invest in other uh, venture capital funds. So I think we, we're an LP in about uh, 14 or 15 uh, funds, mainly early stage, although we do have, uh, I think, one or two in, in later stage um, uh, funds. Uh, capital commitment, our, our current portfolio is rather large. We have about 100 to 140 active companies, and that's across all the, the technologies. We have total commitments of about 550 million in, in direct and another 250 in, uh, in uh, fund invest, in fund, fund investment. And we have people across Canada from Vancouver uh, to Montreal. And uh, we have a fairly experienced team. Many of us have been doing this now for uh, 10. I've been doing it for 11, for 11 years myself. So uh, our investment amount, we invest anywhere from, uh, certainly when we're doing seed, obviously we'll do a lot smaller amount from 500,000 to when we get into the series A, we can go up to 4 million as a first, first uh, investment. But usually our sweet spot's around the two to 3 million uh, first investment. Uh, over the lifetime of a company, if it's doing well and, and we do multiple rounds, we can go up to anywhere from 12 to 15. Uh, we prefer to syndicate anything from Series A on. What we'll prefer to syndicate uh, when we do seed uh, is very difficult to syndicate, and, and we'll most likely do those uh, ourselves. Uh, we've co-invested with pretty much everybody in Canada, I believe, and a number of inst uh, international uh, venture capital funds as well. Uh, we view ourselves as very patient. Um, in a current environment, we've had no choice but to be patient. Um, and uh, because we're a patient, uh, we also have the ability to follow on. We, re we reserve funds whenever we go into a, an investment, we realize there's, there's multiple rounds uh, coming years, years later. Uh, we're long-term focused because we're doing seed. Um, you know, our time horizons are anywhere from five to 12 years. Uh, I think our average age in our current portfolio, life size portfolio is around seven years and growing. So and some of our success stories on, on the right side. Um, and then over the next three years, we expect to do about 260 in, in direct and another 90 million in, in funds. So out of that 260, uh, a big component will go to the existing uh, portfolio, but we are doing new, new investments. So um, what are the challenges of being a, a shareholder in an early stage company. Probably the biggest challenge these days is financing risk. Um, there is a lack, uh, there has always been a lack of seed uh, funding uh, and there are fewer and fewer early stage institutional investors around and, and they always used to talk about a gap in early stage funding. There's a gap right across the spectrum uh, I believe and uh, and there's always been a challenge of when you're an early stage investor trying to raise enough money to get you to the late stage investors. Um, and typically you hope that that gap or that distance is short, but uh, it's been growing and, and it's a real challenge to raise enough money to get to the later stage funds like, like Peter's fund uh, these days. Uh, there's been a retreat uh, from the foreign investors. Uh, historically, they have done some earlier stage investing uh, but now they're doing less and less, and, and they've gone back to their, mostly to focus on their home markets. And, and probably the biggest challenge that, that we currently find with sort of the existing companies is time to finance or the allocation of resources to do a financing. 
uh, it's, it's taking more and more time. Uh, and for management teams that are already thin, I mean, they're early stage companies, they don't have a complete team yet. And so if the CEO is, is having to spend more and more time trying to raise money, he's spending less and less time uh, to do other important things. Uh, and we find it's very, dis they're finding it's very disruptive to their operations because we're doing a lot more sort of bridge financings or they're, so they're, they're stopping and starting. Uh, and, and it's really, you know, making it very difficult uh, for, for, for these companies. And then, uh, you know, given the, the current uh, environment, it's not surprising that when you do get new term sheets uh, from later stage investors or from any investors, uh, you know, there, there's no premium on valuations uh, these days. 